House to Home, presented by Remax Diamond Realty. Hi, hey everybody, and welcome to House to Home. I'm Jason Salas, and as always, I'm joined by my two dear friends from Remax Diamond Realty Guam, Liz Duenas and Gina Kappas. And we have a very special guest with us this week, none other than the distinguished senator for our island, Senator Jim Moylan. Senator. Afade, once again, you have given us so much of your Zoom time, so we appreciate um, another few minutes where you can shed light on uh, on this perspective that I'm sure Liz and Gina are going to absolutely grill you with. I'm, I'm looking forward to it. I thank you for the opportunity, <laughs> and I'm always willing to uh, listen and uh, bring it back to our colleagues there at the 35th Guam Legislature. So thank you for this opportunity to share. Uh, all right. Well, we do appreciate it. Now, uh, Liz and Gina, I guess the, the floor is yours. So I know you you are very, very passionately interested in seeing what's going on, you know, especially with the lockdown of late and its impacts on various aspects of real estate. Well, last week we discussed, um, you know, the GL Guam Land Use Commission. They're actually waiting for uh, confirmations because right now we're dead in the water. There's $2 billion uh, dollars worth of projects sitting uh, that need to go through the ter uh, the grant the the um, Guam Land Use Commission. So we tried to get a number of the other senators online, and of course, it's kind of last minute to get them to come speak. So I appreciate uh, Senator Moylan's presence, but we need someone to push things along in the legislature to get these um, um, applicants or whoever's whoever has been appointed to the commission to get them approved so that these projects could be heard so that they can get a quorum to get things rolling. Um, with Zoom, I don't think the legislature is having a problem meeting since Zoom is, is a great mechanism to meet. There's no excuses in terms of the inability to meet, I think. So um, again, thank you, but we need someone in there to move things along rather than dragging it. And uh, the island is suffering right now. Okay, Senator, how would Gina? you respond to that? Uh, well, <clears throat> Senator, do you know how many people are still missing? Are you aware of, of this issue with Guam Land Use Commission? Um, I understand uh, basically from your conversation uh, and earlier uh, reports that I've heard, uh, they are short of, I believe, coming to a quorum. Uh, and there's many, many boards like that as well. Of course, the governor must appoint and then the uh, committee chair will bring that to uh, public hearing uh, so the senators can uh, listen to their qualifications. And then eventually that should get to session floor uh, where we can confirm uh, the appointments. Those are one of the three jobs that the senator must do for the Organic Act. Uh, I'm more than in favor to uh, be working with the committee chair uh, to uh, see what processes uh, we can to expedite this. When you're mentioning the two billion dollars, uh, that's that's a lot of um, projects for, uh, I'm sure some are commercial and some are uh, maybe residential as well, that the uh, Guam Land Use Commission uh, is needing to approve and if we're delaying that because of their confirmation um, we we can do better and uh, what what i expect is uh, to help expedite this and i'll be happy to uh, um, move it forward with the committee committee chairman on that but you know right now we're at the budget situation with the guam legislature and just yesterday we uh, voted down on the governor's uh, proposal to increase revenues of uh, in in the amount of seven million dollars and they were looking to increase two million into corporate tax and five million of employee withholding taxes too. And where does this all come from? Well, a lot's gonna come from, if, if they really wanted to do that, by approving uh, what should be approved through the Guam Land Use Commission and these building a, a projects. So we gotta get people to work. So I'm more than in favor to uh, assist uh, uh, you folks to to get this going and, and get businesses opening, especially, and get people's their homes that they are waiting for. I'll, I'll be happy to do that. I understand <clears throat> from the Lieutenant Governor that the appointments have been made. So it's just a matter of getting them confirmed and into, into the, the board meeting. So uh, definitely you need to push that along. Yes, absolutely. I'm more than willing willing to do that. I, I can speak with the uh, committee chairperson 
uh, and see, I, I'm not exactly sure, because we had uh, last session, uh, we did approve uh, some of uh, appointments, uh, but I'm not sure if, it, if there were from the Guam Land Use Commission or not and what's still pending. Uh, so I can be happy, I'll be happy to follow up with you uh, after speaking with the committee chair to see where exactly where we're at. And I'll give you an update. You, you know, Senator, so there's a few concerns and of course there's a lot going on. I agree with you. You, you guys have your hands full, but I'm hoping that you can all multitask like the rest of us in the private sector. <laughs> who are trying to That's right. Our normal business and incorporate right. all these new regulations that the government continuously hands down to us. We're figuring it out as we go along and we're, we're, we're finding a way to get our job done. And I know you good senators can do the same. Um, yeah. but, the, but the other thing that we're most concerned about is the fact that, you, you know, so the process of real estate requires business licenses as well. Um, homeowners cannot effectively rent out their homes without, I mean, the law says you must have a business license, which it's a compounded issue because without all, you know, the agencies, you have to clear all the agencies to get a business license. It's quite a troubling <laughs> process. So I am wondering, we are now into September. At this point, I'm hoping that the government could stop reacting to everything and start putting together plans of how it, we need to respond. And, you know, because in the private sector, we've all had to do the same thing. We've addressed the situation of how we can safely operate and keep our employees and our customers safe. And I'm wondering, because we need business licenses, we need building permits to be issued that have been sitting there pending. We need occupancy permits for homeowners that have been sitting there waiting. Mm -hmm. I have a couple of people that are sitting there asking me, Gina, I really, do, do you have anybody you can call? I, we, our house has been done for a while, but our occupancy permit is sitting there. And we have government employees that are getting paid and I'm wondering, can the government put together a response where you could set these up so people could go online and apply for these permits, apply or get occupancy permits issued that are, have, the inspections have already taken place, but the document hasn't been issued. Could we put something together so these things could be done online instead of reacting? I mean, you know, Senator, I have to tell you, it's really difficult right now. I, I mean, we're not just talking about for real estate people. We, we're hearing the concerns from homeowners that are saying, if we don't get our business license so we can rent out our home soon, when the moratorium's lifted, we're not going to be able to make these payments anymore. You know, these mortgage payments. This, it's a catastrophe. Just, it, it isn't, it's not if, it's when. And we're really hoping that this, the, all the good senators they're still in office until come November, that you put your heads together and find out how do you respond to this situation? Not react, respond and solve some of these issues. Yep. It's a domino effect right now. If these people aren't able to pay their mortgages, what's gonna happen? Um, and, and not only that, renters aren't paying rents. Uh, there was some assistance uh, but it just was, they, they got the assistance, but they weren't paying the landlords. And then the landlords can't evict them. So, I mean, I know that was a federal guideline, but man, we're, we're going to be in dire straits towards the tail end of the year if this continues. We'll tell you what, we got about 90 seconds left. So, Senator, I want to give you some time where you can, uh, where you can fairly and hopefully adequately, um, you know, address these concerns. Certainly not unique. Right, right. And, and I appreciate uh, the opportunity to uh, assist. You know, as a, as a senator, yes, uh, these are our responsibilities, especially during our economic crisis during this pandemic. Uh, building is, is a key to making our economy grow. And if the government is holding back or delaying that process due to red tape, uh, that needs to stop. We've had we, we are experiencing the new norm and using computers and communicating like we are today instead of coming into the studio. We can take that same uh, process and apply it to our, our committee meetings, which we have been doing, but it's a matter of prioritizing. 
and I and I do uh, will bring this concern up to the committee chairs, mm -hmm. and I possibly even I could be even a member on one of their committees too to to assist. Um, we 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 can't delay it any further, and there's only three things that as a senator that we're supposed to do. That's balance the budget, and the second one is co confirming appointments. And if this is delaying it. Um, there's no reason why, and yes, we should be juggling, uh, doing multiple multitasking uh, as well. And the, the last thing we, we do is uh, introduce measures, introduce bills. And again, if uh, we are creating red tape instead of helping expedite that, that we're saying we're in a bad financial situation due to businesses not being opening, then here's a possible solution to help assert uh, some of the businesses to by removing this red tape and especially getting people into their homes or allowing them to be rented the business license process um you know we're doing that with the driver's license i understand why why to uh, if if um, to do it over over, over the uh, mail and driver's license right can't can't we do the mm -hmm. same so that's something i'd be happy to uh look into as well, and we can talk well, more offline uh, to discuss with DRT, but I'm, I'm there to serve, and to serve means to help uh, the economy, uh, and these are important things, and i will be more than willing to, while I had the time left in the 35th, and we'll see what happens next, but these are things we can take action on now, so I thank you for the opportunity in expressing these concerns. Thank you very and Senator, much. Senator, we thank you for your time very well. So ladies, uh, thanks so much for bringing this up. And I guess for all four of us, uh, the solution is uh, fairly self-evident. Uh, let's all go to work. <laughs> yes, let's get With the job done. We'll, right. end, we'll end another episode of House to Home. Thank you so much. We'll see you next time. Bye -bye. Thank you. Bye.